Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a doctor who inspired best tech in Life Knife, Knife Life News. Uh, we're going to take a look at two non-knife acquisitions, notable indeed, and then the Knife Junkies, 15 essential modern folders. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment was on Thursday Night Knives last week when my lovely wife joined me uh, for the live stream. It was my birthday and uh, she helped me uh, celebrate. This was from Byron Kennedy great friend of the show. And he says, thanks, Bob and Mrs. DeMarco for the great live stream. The Mrs. is a natural on camera and easy to watch and listen to. She could easily pull off a hobby channel if there is ever an interest. Yeah, a guy named Cliff, postal carrier at the watering hole, local watering hole to me, told me that the Buck 110 was invented to do emergency tracheotomy surgery on forgetful bass fishermen who swallowed those pesky can tabs. Now, he's the two different things here. I love this because he's, of course, uh, mentioning my wife and how uh, lovely and charming she is and how much he enjoyed that show, which I did as well. But also he's mentioning this thing that I found and I mentioned on that night, uh, my birthday night. And uh, this thing I found on my birthday day walking around with my girls made me feel really old. Uh, some of you may know what it is. Uh, some of you Maybe not so much, but this is a pull tab from the top of a soda can or a, um, a beer can or something back in the day. I think they changed this in the very early 80s or late 70s. Whatever it was, I remember when they went to the current current uh, fashion of tab on the uh, on on soda cans. You would pull this thing off and a lot of people uh, who, who didn't really have it going on between the ears would drop it in the can and drink. And this is what Byron was referring to. So he is not only uh, in one breath, he's he's complimenting my wife and in another breath, agreeing with me that I am old. <laughs> Those can tabs are pretty amazing. I can't believe I just found it just kicking it uh, in the stream. So thanks one and all for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. Be sure to do that. And also uh, share videos, share these videos, these podcasts with friends. That helps the show. And also, you know, some people might not know that uh, that we're here, so you could be helping. Of course, there's also the podcast apps to my right. All right. Well, all of that being said, yes, I think it's time for a pocket check. In my front right pocket today, I had the most beautiful and well-engineered uh American Blade Works Model 2. Uh, this is, of course, the second model from American Blade Works, as you can tell uh, by the name. A company headed up by uh, Michael Martin, who um, is not only someone who taught himself how to uh, make knives, but really paid attention to the people whose hands he got them into and, and really perfected that Model 1, taking it through six iterations and uh, landing on version six for his regular production model. Uh, well, he went through some similar uh, uh, R&D for this, but uh, uh, maybe not as much as he learned something along the way making the model uh, one. This model two, this was my first Magna Cut blade. Uh, I just got a second one like moments before uh, we started rolling here. So I'll, I'll show that on next week's show and on uh, Thursday's show. Uh, a very nice surprise knife that showed up in Magna Cut. But this being my first Magna Cut, I'm so thrilled because uh, American Blade Works runs their Magna Cut at 63, 64 Rockwell hardness, which is the sweet spot, according to Laren Thomas, the man who invented the stuff. Uh, so that being said, uh, this blade here is uh, an exquisite work because I know that it's heat treated, right? And it's in this great steel, that's all stuff I'm taking on faith. What I'm not taking on faith is how incredibly sharp this thing is. I love cutting with this knife. It, it, it's like an effortless effort. It just glides through material. And um, that sheep's foot blade 
is about as blunt as I'm willing to go. Uh, of course, it's it's got a nice point there and great for utility. But, you know, I'm always thinking of the secondary weapon aspect of of a knife. And this one is just barely there in terms of thrusting. But you can make that work. Uh, of course, that's not something that comes up day to day for me. So I'm not really serious when I talk about that. But uh, that's more of an aesthetic thing here. Speaking of aesthetics, just an absolutely stunning knife closed. In my opinion, this knife is evocative of like 1930s design, Art Deco cars and trains and airplanes and buildings and all that stuff. I always say it reminds me of the Chrysler building, uh, my favorite building on the New York skyline. Okay, next up, uh, I had, as you may guess, uh, the new laid back jack in my pocket. This one has acquired a snail trail on that big, beautiful, blasted Barlow um, bolster. <laughs> Lots of bees there. Uh, yeah, just got a snail trail I noticed the other night on Thursday Night Knives. And I got to say, that bums me out a little bit. But hey, it's not the not the end of the world for sure. Uh, the the um, gunslinger, which does not come with a slip, which I do not keep in a slip because it's got a, a clip. That's the one that I'm I'm looking forward to watching get weathered. Uh, all these other uh, Jack Wolf knives that live in their comfy little uh, leather sheaths. I don't want them to get messed up. Uh, that is not messed up. That is just a tiny snail trail that I can see. Uh, this, uh, by the way, I was just looking online today. Um, and that's two days ago. <laughs> if you're listening to this the day this drops, there are still some of these available in uh, the two titanium versions and this wood version. The um, uh, one one of them is sort of a blasted plain Jane, quote unquote, titanium. The other one is a um, nicely patterned sort of uh, rock patterned titanium or jigged titanium. Uh, I'm surprised that those haven't sold out immediately. I'm not surprised the wood didn't, but uh, because a lot of people, I don't know, they're not so crazy about the natural materials. But this wood is exquisite. If you have a love of guitars or basses or uh, fretted instruments, you might um, take to this in a special way because that's rosewood. Oftentimes, guitar fret bo boards are made of rosewood. It's got a warm, beautiful look and feel. And on this knife with the with the uh, hand satin blade, which is just exquisite, and the incredibly insanely sharp blade, uh, the wood is a very, very nice touch. I love it. And I love it on a modern slip joint. I think it's an awesome uh, addition there. Uh, okay, so in the waistband, uh, to, oops, sorry about that. In the waistband today, uh, I did not have the Nova one. I had its uh, cousin, its older cousin, uh, the Hogtooth EDC Tonto. Great sheath. I always show this with the sheath. Uh, this is the one that got me interested in designing uh, the Nova one, which is um, Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. It's his platform, this platform, with a different blade. Same length on the blade, just a blade of my design. But again, his incredible hollow grind in 154 cm. You got this razor, this this knife is razor sharp. It is so damn sharp and it's robust. Uh, 154 cm, we don't think of necessarily as an outdoor steel. Well, we think of it as an all arounder. It's a great all around steel. Uh, but this was, um, this is one of my best feather stick makers, at least that I've tried. And uh, I discovered that once when I was uh, taking a bunch of my hollow ground folders out and seeing how they would do uh, making feather sticks on that uh, sort of nasty killed and dried wood that you get outside the grocery store. And they all felt like they were going to snap. And this one just went to town. Uh, I love this dagger. This is a, a regular design of Matt Chase's, uh, except usually it's got a handle that has these... Uh, the scallops in the center. The reason this one does not is because I got this one with that uh, rubberized G10. So it's thin layers of rubber uh, punctuating thicker layers of G10. And when the rubber is presented, when you, when you sand it, it's just ever so slightly grippy. But anyway, uh, he doesn't put that pattern in this handle material. Uh, just a great knife. Um, if you like the Nova one, but missed, out on that that by the way that is shipping the end shipping to me at the end of the month and shipping out sometime in september uh I, i'm gonna say you know first first week of september i want to get them out as quickly as possible um 
But if you missed out on that and you like the form factor and the size, uh, check out Hogtooth Knives and the EDC Tonto. This is one of his standard models. Who knows, the Nova one maybe someday might, might become that as well. All right, and lastly on me for emotional support, where did it get to? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I had it out, and I guess I used it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, well, anyway, we're nothing if not authentic here on the Knife Junkie podcast. I did have the Devo Growler on me, and that was my emotional support knife. Uh, just imagine that cool growler uh, in my hands uh, close up, and I would be telling you about how amazingly thin and slicey that blade is. I would also be telling you about how when I initially assessed that knife, I thought it was kind of like a clip point. But now, uh, now that I'm older and wiser, um, I think it is more like a um, the the fur traders knife, the Hudson Bay knife. Um, some subtle differences between that and a clip point, but it reminds me of that. Just a modern folding version of it. That thing is so broad, thin and slicey. Uh, it is it is one of the best cutters I have in my entire collection, and that's uh, that's uh, Kevin Johnson, uh, Lefty EDC, and Colin Maison Pierre of CM Designs coming together to make Devo knives. Uh, that's what I had in my pocket today. Tell me what you had. Drop that in the comments below. Of course, uh, for me, fixed blade, slip joint, modern folder, and then some sort of gratuitous carry for uh, just pure appreciation. So in a way, that's kind of my art knife of the day. <sighs> wow, that was uh, that was something else. Okay, well, speaking of the Nova one, uh, let me tell you, I got a couple of pictures uh, from Matt Chase. This is the Nova one. If you don't know, uh, this is the this is the knife I was just referring to. Uh, we uh, made twenty five of them. We Matt made is in the process of making twenty five of them, and uh, here are some of the. Here they are, right here. He sent me some pictures. Uh, they are uh, beveled, you know, with their hollow ground bevels. Uh, they are heat treated. They now have the micarta handles. Uh, this was a couple of days ago. And uh, so I'm, I'm presuming at this point he's begun shaping those handles. And um, all of this while finishing 30 knives for his uh, sniper, his old sniper platoon. Platoon is probably not the right word, but... Uh, um, a you know bunch of thirty sniper knives that only he only will give to snipers. He doesn't sell them uh, to Marine Corps scout snipers. Uh, so he did that and this all on a broken leg. So uh, he's he's crushing it. He's also doing his forging work and stuff like that. Uh, Matt is a wonderful guy and he is a tough mofo. He walked his uh, seven hundred pound motorcycle home after wiping out and breaking his leg. So. Uh, <clears throat> So knocking out a couple of Nova ones ain't nothing. So uh, don't worry. The Knife Junkie logo will not be that large on these knives. All right. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, let's take a look at a few stories in Knife Life News. Then after that, uh, two notable acquisitions that are not knives. And then we get to my 15 plus one ultimate essential modern folders. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, Knife Life News. Uh, here's an interesting one uh, from our good buddy Ostop Hell from Poland and Best Tech. This is a Doctor Who inspired knife. Sorry for it. Sorry for the voice crack, but it was unusual. I, I This knife is called the TARDIS. And uh, this uh, article on uh, Knife News doesn't mention any. Uh, makes no references to Doctor Who, but if you know Doctor Who, uh, he gets around the universe and slips through time in a, uh, a British phone booth called the TARDIS. And uh, when this thing is closed, it kind of looks like it. Uh, but it's a, a budget-minded, high-concept high, high concept, uh, knife, I would call it, high-concept 
Uh, it is a cleaver, uh, but it, it's it, it's a very modern looking cleaver. That's a D2 3.15 inch blade with a nice big fuller there. It looks totally inaccessible for uh, flickage, but I can't, of course, I can't quite tell without having it in hand. Sometimes, even though you can't, you can barely see a fuller, you can wedge your finger in there. So looking at this view that Jim has up on screen, uh, you can see how it looks like a phone booth. And then when opened, we can see from that handle contour how much this is an O-stop held design. Uh, that just looks like the um, uh, any any number of his handles kind of widened out. Um, but uh, interesting blade shape. You know, I don't go in much for the cleavers. Nothing. Uh, I'm not too keen on anything that you can't stab with, uh, just because it seems like half half a knife. Uh, but this one is really kind of cool to look at. And uh, uh, Ben Schwartz of of uh, Knife News mentions this is like the perfect little office knife for opening packages, opening up boxes, opening up uh, mail. You could do with this. And it's charming and 100% uh, not intimidating. So that is the Doctor Who inspired TARDIS knife from Ostop Hell and Bastek. Okay, next up, this is a knife. This is old news at this point, but uh, I want to talk about it anyway because I want to get the damn thing. Uh, a bunch of you guys have it already. That is the Civivi Sentinel Strike. It is a budget Wee Ziphius if you will. Uh, the Wee Ziphius came out and sold out immediately. Immediately. I think it was only two, hmm, 500 or 280 pieces. I don't know. One of the two. You choose. Uh, but it doesn't matter because you don't have one and 280 or 500 others do. And uh, the cool thing about that knife is that it's a worn cliff and it had a, we're talking about the Ziphius now, and it had this amazing um, Timascus uh, uh backspacer that is sort of integral so it's not a backspacer but it's a it's a an over cap uh for the back of the handle an integral backspacer cool as hell well they decided to bring this to the um the budget market the high value market i don't want to say budget because everyone's budget is different but this is definitely high value this is about a 110 bucks now through Civivi. So you know it's going to have that incredible uh, Wii Civivi Sen Cut build. This one just has a lesser materials. Uh, you're dealing with um, K110. That's analogous to D2. That's a 3.7 inch blade. That's a nice big knife there. Um, and then you have aluminum scales with a GRN um, backspacer, integral backspacer. So it's doing the same thing, just in lesser materials. Uh, so that is available now. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of you guys are flipping it as I talk about it, saying, Bob, you're always late to the party, Bob. Well, you know, there are lots of parties to go to, so I will get there eventually. That is the Sentinel Strike from Civivi. Okay, next up from We. Uh, we like We knives here. Um, even though I don't have too many We knives, you know, um, I think I tend more towards the Civivis. Uh, but in any case, they have a new one coming out called the Nexuja, Nexuja is what I'm going with. Nexuja. And it's a limited edition knife. Uh, nice shape that they yeah, I gotta say that's not exactly something brand new from Wii. It, I feel like I've seen this before, but no doubt a luxury knife. Uh, you've got this really nice sort of flame anno handle of uh, uh, titanium frame lock. Nice uh, sculpted titanium pocket clip. You have the two, uh, the three little relief cuts instead of one big trench in there for the lock bar. Um, and then the real USP of this is the big 20 CV blade. It's not big necessarily in uh, overall size at 3.48 inches, uh, but it is broad and it has a big giant fuller. So it is. it has the impression of size. Uh, the Nexuja. Um, again, this is another limited one. I think they're keeping it to, uh, what did we say here? I think 405, 405, something like that. Uh, you can see right up at the tip, it looks like a flat, like a bit of a flat grind there and then a hollow grind on the main. Um, uh, so neat, neat. You can tell I don't like it cause I called it neat. Uh, it's cool. It's, it's, it's a solid offering by Wee Knives. I'm not crazy about those uh, 
holes, uh, the holes on it remind me of uh, some late 90s, early 2000s Kershaw's and uh, well, too many notes. Uh, but there you go. That's my uh, that's my take on the Nexuja. Uh, also an unwield, uh, unwieldy name, let's be honest, uh, the Nexuja. But I, I know that's a struggle, the name thing. So we knives, keep your eyes on them. They're always doing something cool. All right, last up, I just want to say that the uh, the USN gathering, this is number 14, uh, is coming up at the end of the month. And uh, the gathering is something that actually started in the knife forums. I don't know which one. Uh, this is before the Usual Suspects Network started. Uh, the U Usual Suspects ne Network started from a bunch of Strider and Emerson enthusiasts originally, I believe. Uh, but anyone uh, who wants to correct me in the comments can. That's that. That was the basis for it. I think that that they were in one of the forums, and and then they broke off, started their own forum, and then eventually started doing this meetup, uh, the gathering in Vegas uh, every year, at the end of uh, end of the summer. And the cool thing about the gathering is that they have this concept. I think they call them qu quadrants, uh, where a table. Uh, will have four different makers at the four different quadrants. Two of them will be sort of in the prime of their career, and then two of them will be up and comers. So, uh, so the up and comers are getting exposure from the uh, more seasoned makers, and the more seasoned makers are getting infused with some of that uh, uh, new energy. The energy that a new artist brings to anything is like infectious and awesome and and they're willing to take chances and some of that rubs off on the older guys now that is my own assessment i don't no one's i don't know if that's actually true but i could see how uh, a, a seasoned person being around someone young and enthusiastic that like that you can get just as much out of that as vice versa anyway so that's a cool uh that's a cool way to set up the show and then and then it's also known for the cove and the cove is uh i used to belong to the USN, the Usual Suspects Network, which is kind of like a forums uh, thing. Um, and I used to belong to it to buy and sell. Uh, and I just didn't end up getting much traction there. So I, I didn't. But the the place that I went to buy and sell was called The Cove. That's, that, that's what it is on the website. So at the gathering every year, they have a real live cove. So you can come there with your knives and trade and sell and buy from other enthusiasts who are at the show. So it's kind of like the pit at blade show but you're also buying selling and trading from one another so it just sounds like a really awesome thing one of these years i gotta get my butt out there but man i'd love to go to every one of these shows <sighs> but that's not gonna happen this year but one of these years it will all right that's it for knife life news coming up we're gonna take a look at two notable non non knife acquisitions right here on the knife junkie podcast don't take dull for an answer it's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. If you were here on Thursday for Thursday Night Knives, uh, August 17th, my birthday, you saw this. I couldn't stop talking about it. This is my new watch the, that my wife got me. This is the Seiko SNJ025, otherwise known as the Arnie. This is the reissue of the watch that Arnold Schwarzenegger wore in some of my favorite movies in the eighties, commando predator, raw deal. Another, uh, I think there are a couple of others uh, where he was wearing this watch, just being a badass, And I always loved it. Uh, first from commando uh, where they took this watch and they actually tweaked it a little to make it more, um, dramatic for screen, I guess, where they kept the digital, but they they made two dials on there instead of one dial. Uh, anyway, it was the same watch, same sort of turtle, um, uh, sh uh, not shell, but same uh, turtle case from Seiko. That's like a metal case here, dive case, 
with this plastic shroud. Uh, this is a solar watch, solar quartz. So uh, it, it's going to last for a long time on that solar uh, quartz battery system. And there's a lot to this uh, watch that's very cool. But I wanted to show it off because I'm very proud of it. I love it. I'm very excited to have it. I've wanted it for 40 freaking years. And my awesome wife got it for me for uh, for my birthday. So I feel a little bit like John Matrix. Okay, uh, other uh, than that, oh, well, what watch do I have on me here? Let me just show this really quick. Uh, this this thing, um, this is a $20 Casio. It looks just like a, uh, a, a Luminox seal watch. Uh, I this is a great banger too, and $20. It looks great, that bezel works. The only, the only problem with it, it was super accurate. The only problem with it is not much loom. Uh, so uh, an, an interesting thing. Uh, the, the last thing I wanted to show off, you know I talk about cigars uh, every once in a while. I'll smoke a nice cigar. I have these Zippos from when I was a smoker uh, back in the day in college and high school, and I had Zippos. My brother got me this one. That's a Vargas girl. Here, let me see if I can. Or a Varga girl. Uh, Varga was a pinup artist, painted all these, you know, gorgeous pinup girls. And uh, this one. Uh, so I got a Zippo butane filler finally. So you see that that jet flame there. That is the perfect flame for lighting a cigar. So I don't know why it took me this long. Um to get one of these things to, to put in my Zippo. Uh, but if you don't like the taste of Zippos, now when I smoked cigarettes, I actually liked the taste of the Zippo fluid when you lit a cigarette and you tasted that and inhaled it and it tasted good. I don't like that taste with other things. Uh, well, cigars, for instance, I don't like that taste. So uh, that butane filler is cool because now I get to be cool with the, with the Zippo. Oh, that wasn't cool. Neither was that. All right. Well, just pretend I was just being cool with the Zippo and I get to enjoy it as a piece of kit without having to use a plastic disposable. So definitely, definitely a cool thing to check out. All right. So another cool thing to check out, we're going to get into our, I was thinking about what are the essential knife knives out there? Now I recently did one uh, where I was talking about timeless knife designs and I was really going for designs that you you cannot argue with these things are timeless and classic and and there is no arguing that matter and uh end of story this is more what i consider my 15 essential modern folders basically what it comes down to is if i had to get rid of all the other modern folders heaven forbid because i have a lot that didn't make it onto this uh these are the ones that i think are essential so Let's start out with a big one. This is the uh, Demco Knives 8020. And this is the big boy. You know, this is a machine ground 8020. You can you can um, you can get the machine ground, which is, uh, you know, a, a less expensive knife or you can get the hand ground uh, if you're made of money. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but if you have like good timing and are tenacious, you can get a hand ground model of this. But this is essential to me because it is Andrew Demko, uh, I, I arguably at his best, um, because uh, all all of the things that have come before this, um, incredible accomplishments in design, innovation with locks, and um, everything he did with cold steel. That propelled him forward but but all of those things came out of his custom knife work and to me this lock really is the one that uh that wins the day now uh the triad lock who knows it might be stronger but but this one has strength like pretty awesome strength plus it's got fidgetability it's got charm it's got that x factor that je ne sais quoi that we get from flipping and closing and driving our wives crazy. And you know what? If you don't have um, if you don't have the desire to save up to get one of these machine ground 8020s or uh, yeah, 8020s or you don't have the desire to save up to get and and wait around and do the work to find a hand ground one, you can always get a very awesome and Taiwan made um 8020.5. It's going to be smaller, it's going to be slimmer, it's going to be easier to carry. 
um, but it will have the same great design and um, you'll love it. Uh, this is a chunk to carry, I got to say. Uh, something I've always loved about this is the wampum PA right there. Well, Demco knives there and wampum PA on that side. Proudly made in Pennsylvania, which if you've never been there is an absolutely beautiful state. I only usually just drive through it, but I love Pennsylvania. Uh, okay, next up, Spider Co. You know everyone's thinking PM2, uh, but I'm not. I, I was thinking this right here. This is the Yojumbo. Now, the Yojumbo has some of what the PM2 has, i.e. it has the compression lock, and it's got this thing going. It's got the, uh, the awesome deployment and um, closing and fidgetability and all that. But what it has is this big four inch broad hollow brown uh, hollow ground worn cliff, which is an amazing utility blade. It also happens to be an amazing tactical blade. So those two things put together, I think, make this an incredibly versatile knife, um, maybe even more versatile than the PM2, though uh, this being hollow ground and having a dainty tip, there are things you wouldn't want to do with this that you would do with your PM2. Uh, but all things being equal, which they aren't, admittedly, I would still say that this is the more versatile knife. If you're someone who goes uh, utility EDC into possi possible weaponry. Um, and why the Yojumbo? Well, because it's the Jumbo one. I, I love the Yojimbo. And actually, I think the Yojimbo 2 has better lines. It's a, it's a better looking knife than the Ronin. It's a better looking knife than the Yojumbo or the Micro Jimbo that's coming out. It's better looking than all of the other knives. That's the Yojimbo Yo too. Uh, but it's still not the one I would choose because I might be superficial. But people, I'm not that superficial. That's only got a 3.25 inch blade and I need more. So that's what I would choose. This, of course, uh, this Yojumbo, I took that uh, G10 partition off of the handle there, smoothed it out. And uh, man, I love this thing. Probably my favorite Spider Co. Okay, next up, uh, this one is the Riot K2. Uh, this is still the knife I go to when I want to talk about Riot. Um, it also might be the knife I, I go to if I want to talk about an exquisite uh, Tonto blade. I absolutely love this Tonto blade to use and to look at. It's got this very, very nice thinly ground hollow straight here. And then of course you've got that Riot um, satin machine finish. It's so beautiful. And then you've got the flat up here and a nice belly on that forward portion. Beautiful to look at that handle contouring the titanium, everything about this. But the action, this was the first knife I had that had drop shut action, uh, besides the SOCOM Elite. But I didn't really understand the nature of drop shut action when I got that one. This one has uh, versatility. I mean, it's it's a it's a charming, good looking knife. You pull this out, obviously you know about knives. Uh, it there's some menace there if you need it, but if you just need to use it, I, I mean, I could be in my own echo chamber, but I think this thing. Eh, it's pretty threatening. All right, I'll back off of that. Uh, but yeah, the, with the dragon scales and the bronze handle, I'm so happy. This was the only one that had left when I bought this. Uh, I really hemmed and hawed because of the price when they came out, but I, I had to have that blade. I just thought that blade was so beautiful. And when I finally moved and saved up enough money to buy it, the only one they had left was the bronze with this sort of dragon scale. And so I got it. And I'm so glad this is the one. I ended up with because they had these other ones that I thought were cool. I really wanted at the time that were anodized blue, like a light blue. And then they had these silver diamonds uh, that were supposed to evoke uh, the Sukamaki wrap on a samurai sword. Um, and I, I, I liked that, but now the bronze, Oh yeah. The bronze is so nice. Uh, but a Riot nonetheless, I have a few Riots and this one uh, is the one that I think of when I think of the consummate Riot knife, and they just make incredible things. Okay. 
Next up, speaking of the Microtech SOCOM Elite, I'm going to show you the Microtech SOCOM Elite. This, of course, is my um, road trip knife. This knife uh, was a lot of firsts for me. This was my first knife in S35VN. It was my first Microtech. It was my first uh, um, knife, uh, knife with a glass breaker. Um, this was my first knife with bearings, and I didn't even know it. I just thought it was so excessively, oddly smooth. I was like, what? I, I don't, why is this? How can it be? And then, you know, because this was made in 2013, and in 2013, that's 10 years ago, they were not such a big deal. People were not like, it, it was not uh, the cost of admission. Uh, most knives were still on washers. So the smoothness of this was spooky. Um, but now in modern, modern age, it's, it's par for the course. And, and I, I gotta say, it still has some of the best bearing action out there. Got some schmutz on there. This thing has done it all because every time I take a trip in the car, that's longer than like two hours. I put this in my pocket because I originally started doing that because of the glass breaker. And just in case, uh, the, these make excellent unopened weapons. Like this is hand this is like perfectly made for a hand uh in this position but you can break break glass with that so this became the road trip knife so this is cut all manner of things this is like opened up oil you know taking the seal off of oil things and and uh and windshield wiper fluid it's cut waffles and all manners of breakfast and burgers and meals and stuff this has done it all and it's been in my pocket tip down the entire time that's how great this knife is. This this and the military get the pass on the tip down. But now that there's the military too, that pass is going to go away. Great knife. Uh, so why is this one of the essential modern folders? Well, uh, because I like to get in the car and drive for longer than two hours. Next up, I had to have an Emerson on this list. And I really hemmed and hawed over which one it would be. And Initially, I was thinking the commander, it's got to be the commander, but that's not the one I carry all the time. This is the one I carry most, most of the time. And I absolutely adore this knife. I think it's one of the best they've ever done that I've gotten my hands on. And I'm surprised they have not done more sax style blades, considering uh, Ernest Emerson is a proud Norwegian uh, or proud. Is he Norwegian? I don't know. He's He's got some proud Nordic uh, blood ancestry in him. And you'd think he, and, and this knife was so popular. Uh, you'd think he'd do more of these sort of sack style blades, but he seems totally devoted to the Bowie and I cannot blame the man. It's an amazing blade shape, but this, uh, this one, when this came out, just one, won my heart. I had to do a couple of things though, because the, um, clip, if you know, the Emerson clips, it's that standard, uh, they call it bench made clip, I guess. Uh, but it was starting right here. So audaciously high rides up ridiculously high. Had to get the loop over pocket clip here. This is an MXG gear clip. Um, this is one that I keep thinking I'm going to send off uh, to Vantage Blade Works to have uh, Tom Engelson make new handles for this. I just haven't yet because I love it how it is so much. The blade is so incredibly sharp. Of course, it's a chisel ground edge and a v-ground blade uh, those bevels are, are v-ground um i didn't like the ergonomics when i first got it compared to most other emersons but now i really i, I don't even think about the ergonomics they're just natural to me and that blade is just incredible 154 cm nice big generous wave feature there so it waves out perfectly you have to have a wave knife a waved knife in your collection um whether it's an an emerson wave like this or a kershaw emerson or a zt emerson with the wave or any number of other companies that have bitten off that concept like cold steel with the thumb plate or um you know whoever else you got to get something that you can tear out of your pocket and immediately deploy to, to just to have an essential it's got to be part of your essential modern folders collection okay next up it, an absolute beauty um is the sinkovich designed 
zero tolerance, zero four uh, zero four five two CF zero four five two CF the big one. Uh, that's a 3.25 inch. No, that's a, a 4.125 inch blade. So four and an eighth, uh, inch S 35 VN blade. And just, I, I can't say enough how beautiful I think this knife is. And many of the Sinkovich designs, um, just are naturally, do they just touch me? in a way that other designs don't. I don't know. Something about this knife is so perfect. And there was a whole series of this. Um, there was a ZT limited edition that came out first, um, you know, the with the, with the jigsaw blade with the different steels and stuff. I don't need that fancy pants stuff. I just need this blade profile. Much like the, uh, much like the SOCOM Elite, something that I love about this is the downward thumb ramp with the jimping so it's like you're pulling back and it keeps the the knife locked in hand really well and this knife has that same thing uh this this uh zero four zero four five two cf was for a while um my smoothest knife um i don't consider it that anymore but look at the beautiful shape of that just perfect it's big but it's slender same thing with the clip though bad clip it had this really cheesy kershaw clip and so i replaced it with an mxg gear clip to fit this knife that's titanium um sort of interferes a little bit with the scoop out there but not too badly it's long enough that the tension on it isn't so bad uh if this is too too big for you check out the zero tolerance zero 450 that's the smaller one and uh, man it's just a gorgeous design very useful design all right that was a big one uh, at 4.125 inches we're going to narrow it down a little and 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 bring it down for these next two because these are essentials but they're not front right pocket knives and the rest of these really are first is the jack wolf knives gunslinger a stellar bolster lock look at that thing this thing is just a beauty to look at with that uh arctic storm blue carbon fiber the blue anodized titanium backspacer um and then the blasted titanium bolsters triple fluted up here at the front bolster single fluted back here and then uh, ben Belkin, after designing 13 really awesome slip joints, just up and designs an awesome front flipping bolster lock. So, I mean, the man can design a knife uh, and he's versatile. This is this is really, really good at what it is. And he has gotten really, really good at doing slip joints. So it's cool to see that the moment he steps out of that, he's successful with this thing. Um over the summer, this has gotten a lot of shorts carry, and I've carried this a lot as my. That's a that's a three point what four eight inch blade, so uh, it can ride in the front pocket. And I've this has gotten a lot of shorts carry this summer, especially if I'm going to a restaurant or a party or something. Um, it hasn't happened, but I'm imagining someone saying, "Anyone have a knife?" And I pull this out, and they're like, "Oh my god." That's so beautiful. I didn't know knives could be so cool. And then I kind of bring them into the world. Uh, this would be a great knife to do that with. Um, not only with that action, which is front flipper and and reverse flick and even thumb flick. Um, so not only the action, but just the beautiful looks and the incredible cutting here. That uh, S90V blade is just it's so thin. It's like paper thin behind the edge. So you get incredible performance from this knife as well as just stunning looks and an overall super cool package. Okay. This one, um, this next one is uh, fulfilling a lot of roles here uh, because this is the only access style lock knife we have. And that is not an access lock. That is an able lock advanced uh, ambidextrous bar lock enhanced uh, by Hogue. Hogue uh, was one of the first companies to legally post um, 
post patent expiration of the uh, access lock to make an access lock. Of course, uh, San Renmu and all those Chinese companies were doing it uh, long before and kind of getting a getting an illegal or unethical jump on the access lock. Uh, but this is the Hogue version of the Ritter RSK Mark I knife. And that is uh, fondly known and formerly known as the Benchmade uh, Ritter Grip. Doug Ritter, he's the guy who started knife rights and has continued to be plowing through state from state to state, changing laws, changing antiquated laws, allowing us to carry knives we never could before. For instance, me here in Virginia, two years ago, I couldn't carry or own an automatic knife. Now, thanks to Doug Ritter and the efforts of knife rights, not only can I own, buy, sell, make, and export a, an automatic knife from the state of Virginia. I can carry it concealed. What do you know? So Doug Ritter, I mean, every time you buy one of his knives, which happen to be just amazing, uh, you're you're also putting money in his wallet so that he can stay alive. Uh, because Knife Rights is not a money-making venture. It is a freedom venture. And freedom costs has costs. And for him, it's... Uh, you know, living. So making these knives and selling them through KnifeWorks, this is a KnifeWorks exclusive. That's how he can uh, keep the lights on and keep fighting for our knife rights. All that said, uh, this that's not what makes this knife make the list. This knife makes the list because it is incredible. With the 20 CV blade, uh, the original concept of the Ritter Griptilian was a high-performance blade in super modern high-performance steel in an affordable handle so that the package is overall affordable. So those early ones had GRN and uh, now uh, with Hogue, it's G10, a little bit longer handle, some changes, uh, contouring, beautiful, this beautiful uh, G-Mascus. Uh, it's just a great overall package. This is the mini. I had the large. I gave that one to a friend in need uh, and then, and then, uh, Doug Ritter sent me this one. So one good one good turn deserves another. Next up, the Spartan Blades Harzy Folder. Spartan Harzy Folder. This thing, uh, you know, has the build of a Sebenza and a Strider and a, a um, Hinderer, uh, but it's got its own special vibe. It is stout as the day is long, but it's got that beautiful, those beautiful lines that you expect from Bill Harsey. I mean, I, I, I feel like I can, I can pick a single edged Bill Harsey knife out of a lineup any day and probably most of his daggers too. I just think uh, his, his, his style is very, very uh, emblematic and unique. And this of course is, I think uh, the greatest uh, sort of folding iteration of his of his what am i trying to say i love this knife that's all i'm trying to say i think this is the best folder so far he did a bunch of stuff uh early on with um lone wolf knives that had these similar lines and then we've seen his gerber design has a sim has similar lines to this doesn't matter but the fact that spartan blades made this uh is is what pushes it over the edge so you take the workmanship the the made in north carolina aspect of Spartan blades, and then you um, put all that in a Harzy design, and you get this amazing knife. This one, of course, has my logo etched in it, uh, thanks to Curtis Iovito. Very, very nice of him. And uh, S35 VN blade steel. This is one I I, I vacillate back and forth about uh, getting reground. All right, next up, got to have a Kukri in the collection. This is. This was a gift from my wife a number of years back. This is the Knight Elements MK Ultra. This is made by Fox Knives, designed by uh, Jason Knight. Uh, you know him from maybe his stint on Forged in Fire as a judge. But he makes these incredible uh, forged knives. He's an incredibly talented guy who makes these beautiful kukris. And he also has a company... Uh, making small EDC type items like this perfect folding kukri knife 
And then he's got some OSS style lapel knives and those kind of things, which are really cool too. But this to me is 100% essential, at least for my um, collection. Yes, you have the wonderful Raja 2 cold steel folding kukri, but let's face it, most of us can't carry that thing around. It's huge, it's heavy, it's girthy, it's intimidating as all hell. This is substantially shorter at two and a quarter or four and a quarter inches on that blade, carries smaller. Uh, it's got the very thin uh, frame lock here, titanium frame lock with um, linerless micarta on the show side. So thin, light, relatively. And then, of course, N690 CO blade steel because it's made in Italy. And heaven forbid they use any other steel than N690. But N690 is a nice steel. But that beautiful fuller, this thing is required owning. Uh, you can still buy this knife, though. I don't think they sell it with my card anymore. I think it's uh, G10 only. So the Knight's Element MK Ultra. Next up, a newish addition is the Mekong Delta Combat Folder from uh, Goose Work, Goose Blade Works, who is... Uh, associated with or a sub company of resco instruments resco instruments is a company started by some former frogmen uh i i call them that because they call themselves that i think that's uh navy seals before they were going by navy seals maybe uh but a couple of frogmen started a company making uh luxury adventure tool watches if that's a thing uh and they started a knife company and this is, was their second design um, I just love this thing. I wish I held out and got one with hollow grind and my carta on the handle, but I didn't. And those are sold out. So I have this with a saber grind and plain Jane, uh, uh, my car or uh, titanium. And it's still just one of my absolute favorite knives of all time. I tell the story every time, uh, I thought that this was, uh, an American made knife. Uh, but it's not. But it doesn't matter. This is a, a Bestech made knife. And Bestech knows how to make a damn knife. And this thing is on washers. And I want more washer knives. I'm, I'm, I, I like bearings. But not every damn knife has to have bearings. And this one really, oh, it's got that luxurious Sabenza feel to it. That close and open. Uh, that's 20 CV blade steel. And, and also... Uh, let me see. I think I have it. Yeah, I have this in my pocket right here. Uh, wasn't planning on doing this, but look at how similar. Look at how similar all the contours. All right. Okay, so that's the Mekong Delta Combat Folder. Love that. Very similar to the 0640 by uh, Emerson and ZT. And, of course, that is from the old... Uh, from one of the very early Emerson knives, uh, whose name now I'm just spacing. Okay, next up in this list, the VSEP from Les George Knives. This is a mid-tech version. This was his uh, mid-tech knife. And this to me, excuse me, was the first knife I can ever remember hearing that term mid-tech mid used for what's a mid tech bob well that's when a maker has the pieces cut out by someone else like say these titanium slabs and the blade cut out by someone else and then the maker assembles them puts the bevels on sharpens them does all the finishing work and assembly work now that's kind of like a standard operating procedure and so we don't use that term so much anymore but it was kind of a bridge between custom knife and production knife and this thing is just so Gosh, man, I love this knife. Um, the moment I saw the design, I fell in love with it. They were calling it a Sabenza killer at one point, and I thought, absolutely, way better looking than a Sabenza. Now my uh, my taste and eye for Sabenza has matured, but uh, this thing was a grail for a long time. Finally got this one from a guy in Singapore. I always talk about it. It took forever to get this, and I thought I was being ripped off, and then it showed up one day. So happy. Uh, but again, on washers, super luxe, uh, smooth, oiled glass style action, XH XHP blade, 
beautiful drop point blade with that thumb ramp just has a classic look um, you can see this rock eye pattern in um, uh, protex knife lineup they do a sbr the small version of this and then the larger rock eye auto which was uh, how i got first behind the wheel of this design uh, that handle is so comfortable it's it's you know you got nice ergonomics with that thumb choil and such but it's very neutral and just a pleasure to hold that is the v-sep from les george all right next up when most mere mortals would say an XM18, three and a half inch, I say XM24 with the four inch blade. Um, because my assessment is just partially visual, I got to say the four inch blades by Hinderer Knives uh, truly express the idea best. Uh, and what I'm trying to say is when you see the three and a half version of this, which I also have, the blade seems truncated here it's beautiful long graceful it has the full length uh, full opportunity to express itself kind of like a ferrari daytona it has that nice long front hood for all of those cylinders you know uh that's kind of how i feel about this knife just a absolutely stunningly beautiful uh titanium frame lock with you know all of the bells and whistles you expect i.e. the hinderer uh, invented travel over travel um no lock bar insert this is this is a this is an older uh, model and it still flips amazing it's on it's on teflon washers and flips amazingly you got incredible action on this m390 blade steel uh you know i've used it a bunch over the years but never hard enough to discover whether the m390 is uh you know how it's heat treated or anything like that but uh to me uh, just a, a a beautiful looker a great one to carry and then just an incredibly useful blade shape there all right three more here three more uh next up uh the opposite in 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 carry uh this thing is so like thin and precise and and thinly ground and beautiful that's the trm atom i have a bunch of different scales for this including g carta including g uh g10 and also a regular my carta but this one i keep coming back to this is that wing milled pattern in there let's see if we can see that you can see a well there's a wing pattern milled okay there we can see it kind of it's hard to make out in in the uh background noise of the of the micarta but that's a burlap micarta you see that nice loose weave and then you see there's a section here that's got a feather like um milling in it and it just feels great in hand nice and thin super sharp and thin slicey 20 cv blade uh this one was a sec factory second because of that little blemish there just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And the cool thing about this, the US, one of the USPs about the uh, TRM Atom and other TRM knives is that all you have to do is remove those two screws and you can change the scales lickety split. You don't have to disassemble the whole thing. At 3.6 uh, inch blade and less than a half inch thick, this is a great way to carry a nice amount of very, very sharp super steel. All right, second to last, this one you were probably expecting. This is the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza, um, a knife that I bought out of a feeling of obligation and have absolutely fallen in love with. It's like an arranged marriage in a way, uh, you know. <laughs> and uh, so this one is the titanium, black titanium micarta. Um, I like to talk about how when this showed up, the titanium or the uh, micarta was the same color as the titanium. And then after like a week of carrying this, it went totally black. Love that. Nice hollow ground blade, as you as you know, on the Sabenza. This is the 21. Uh, the 31 has some updates, but this 21 is absolutely perfect in my book. Um, I dropped this one and broke off the tip, had it reprofiled and sharpened by Jared Neve. He put a screaming sharp edge on this knife. 
and this is this is one of the ones that I judge everything by. Uh, and and I'm not alone in that. Uh, I do have the Umnum Zan Tanto, and I adore that knife, but this one still trumps that one. That is the uh, S35 VN um, 2016. This was made in 2016 on Leap Day. So uh, this one doesn't have a birthday too often. Uh, that is the Chris Reeve Knives, Sabenza 21. And now last up, that was number 15, my plus one. I'm, I'm calling this a plus one because... I'm sure many of you, uh, your mileage will vary, but my collection would be nothing without an XL cold steel folder. And in this case, I'm going to go with the cold steel Espada because, because it does a lot of things here. First of all, that's a five and a half inch clip point blade that's stunning and beautiful. And then you've got the bolster, the aluminum polished bolster uh, and, and the uh, polished G10 handle. So everything about this uh, looks beautiful. Uh, functionally speaking, it's got the triad lock. It's got all these different handholds, different ways to hold this. Uh, incredibly sharp S35VN. Uh, Cold Steel is known for their amazing heat treats. But the other thing that this knife in particular does in a lot of the XL Cold Steels is that it, it takes a design from history, puts a modern twist on it, and, and perfects it through modern uh, materials and engineering and this is a modern version of the navaja carried by spanish folk once they could no longer carry swords to settle their scores they carried around very large folders uh, hence the name espada here which means sword in spanish so i though this one is not one that will fit in many pockets a lot of people will not want to have this one around probably a lot of the knives in my list are a little large for some people but again this is my 15 essential modern folders. I'd love to find out what yours are, by the way. Uh, but most definitely as part of that, I would have to have uh, a, an XL cold steel. And I think when it all comes down, it would have to be this one. The fancy dress is spot a large. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are my 15 plus one essential modern folders. What are yours? Let me know. Drop them in the folder uh, in the comments below and uh, let me know uh, what you think. I always like finding out how people uh, value their knives and, and how they how they rank order them. I always find that interesting. All right. Uh, if you like this show, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, become a patron. You can do that by going to the knife slash Patreon or scanning the QR code. And be sure to join us on Sundays for our great interview show. We, we talk to a lot of interesting people here. Then tomorrow night, Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.